All right, we've got Anna Boltzer here. She's going to talk about coalition building. Okay, so I'm cutting this down because I want to make sure you guys do have time for discussion um, and uh, the rest of the good stuff happening today. Um, so it's going to be an abridged version, um, but I want to start out by saying again that this is a really special thing happening here, and building coalitions and working in coalition can be really challenging, and so it's good to sort of um, be really, really intentional as you move forward as this budding coalition begins to flower um, of, of some of the of some of the ways of nurturing that and and, may, and ensuring its sustainability and ensuring its success. Um, so I'll say that, and I'll also say that there are lots of different kinds of coalitions, and so you know there's no one size fits all. So I'm just going to offer you some of the stuff that I've learned. I'm still a novice at coalition building. It's really challenging and really um, takes a lot of it's a learning curve, um, but so I'll offer you these things with a grain of salt, um, knowing also that there are different kinds and, and models that work for different people. Um, so I'm, I'm particularly, I'm increasingly interested in coalition building both within the movement, with different groups that are involved, let's say, in focusing on Palestine, and also cross-issue, cross-struggle organizing with, um, with other campaigns that are, um, with other communities that are fighting racism and colonialism and um, other kinds of injustice, um, drawing those ties and placing our work within the broader framework of anti-racism commitment to global justice, not just justice in Palestine. Um, so um, I have worked recently, well, I'll, I'll skip this part. I'm going to try to go quick here. Um, so, uh, so yeah, I, I had sort of these seven main lessons that I learned, and I had a PowerPoint, but I feel like it's going to just go really quickly and be a little confusing. So I'm sorry I not have a visual. I hope that I can speak compellingly enough to, to hold your attention. Um, but um, the top seven lessons that I've learned, I want to share with you. Um, the first one is inclusivity and, having, and getting people involved early on. I think a lot of times we have a really good idea and we want to make this campaign and then we want to get other people to join our campaign. And that's exactly what we're doing. We're trying to get other people to join our campaign. And that's not really necessarily particularly empowering, particularly appealing. This is particularly an issue in terms of Palestinian involvement. A lot of times, um, predominantly white groups will form a campaign, an idea, and not understand why Palestinians don't want to get more involved, not realizing that Palestinians should be central to, to all of our work, and that, that just in the way that we look to Palestinians in, in guidance for the, in the BDS campaign, that that oftentimes I think we inadvertently might alienate and marginalize and, cert and not um, include as much as we would like to Palestinian involvement. And one of the ways of, of ensuring that is to make sure that that involvement is, is early on and not sort of a tag on at the end, because um, in, in a way that, that can be uh, tokenistic. Um, let's see where the paper is where they end up. They stack. Um, I actually have a from Jan. Mm -hmm. There, are they there? Uh, they're not there, are they? No. I don't know where they are. They're pretty big stuff. <laughs> it's not the one that's on. It's not the one that's on. Oh, that's probably where they are. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, so you know what I might do is I might actually I might pass this around later, but there's a really um this is a, this is taken out of a and I can't remember the name of it. Do you remember the name? What's the name of the attachment? Um, but it's it's taken out of a um, a pamphlet on um, cross struggle organizing, and it's basically you, you, it's it has these different categories of different kinds of organizations: the all white club, the token or affirmative action organization, the multicultural organization, and the anti racist organization. And it's kind of an interesting process to go through and sort of categories, decision making, budget, money, accountability, culture, programs, to go through and see where your organization fits. You might find, for example, that decision making seems to, there seem to be, you know, um, centers of power within your organization. Are they, you know, are they Palestinian, Palestinian? Are they not? Who makes bigger decisions? Who decides programmatic stuff? Anyway, I can say, you know, from the perspective of the U.S. campaign, we're going through a process of, um, of an internal education, anti-racism training. I'm going through that on a local level as well. It's nothing to be ashamed of. And learning, seeing where maybe at different points we could do things more intentionally. Um, and this is, anyway, so this to bring this back, um, if we're talking about coalition building with, with other struggles, I think a lot of times we talk about it and we really, really want to make those connections and we really, really want more people of color in our organization organization. We really want, um, you know, I, I don't know, we want, we want to bring all these things together, but 
But um, sometimes one of the things that's missing, and I can tell you this from personal experience, is reciprocity. There's this idea that we want people to come to our events or to come to our meetings and to care more about what we're doing. And sometimes we forget to reciprocate that in a really meaningful way, not in a tokenizing way, but to actually go to those events, invest in those meetings, and show the, that, that, that we do see this within this broader context. So anyway, just a, just a few points on that. This is not doing it justice. Um, I'm going to anti-racism trainings all the time, and believe me, I'm just a novice, but um, those are some of the, some of the uh, concepts that I'm, that I'm learning more about. Um, okay, so um, uh, within the context of inclusivity, empowerment and inclusivity is more important than perfection. This is something that I, can, I have a hard time with. Sometimes we have a media opportunity in our local group, and we really want to get the best media person in front of them, because it seems like a great opportunity. And lo and behold, every single time it's the same people talking, every single time it's the same people representing our organization. And it's because of this fear of sort of relinquishing control, especially those who have founded the organization, of, of letting others do that talking. And so as you're building a coalition, as you're coming together, recognizing that people have different experience levels, people have different capacities, people have different um, abilities, talents, uh, and, and some people may not be as good as others at certain particular things, but to prioritize the involvement and inclusivity. To make it more important to have a new person, let's say, in front of the camera, than to have the perfect interview. And it's an investment in, in the future of the coalition and people's buy-ins, for people to feel ownership, for people to feel that they're a part of it. So this is something I have a hard time with, because I want everything to be done super, super well, and sometimes I have a hard time relinquishing control to people who are less experienced, and I challenge myself, and I encourage you to as well. Um, okay, so that was inclusivity. Would you like me to pass those out? I, I realize it'll be distracting, so I think what I'll do is I'll pass them out after. Um, okay, relationship building. Do you guys know the three prongs? Um, I'm not going to say them exactly right, like the words that were used, but I'll say the concepts. Three prongs of social justice work, as they're often characterized in actually looking at Gandhi's um, Gandhi's work and his um, and the, the, his struggle, uh, the struggle of his people. The three prongs of their social justice work. What what were they? One of them was community building. One of them was uh, direct service. And one of them was direct action. And whenever we think about Gandhi, we think about the third one, right? You know, the strikes and the, you know, the, 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 the really you know, juicy stuff that we love to talk about. We need to do more of that, et cetera. Um, well, it turns out that 90% of Gandhi and the movement's time was spent on the first two, community building, and, uh, and direct service. You think of the Black Panthers. A lot of time was spent, you know, milk programs, uh, after school programs, et cetera, building the community, building trust. And oftentimes, we in the social justice movements, we really like to focus on the last one. We want to put 90% of our, of our, of our um, energy into that one. I do this. I really want to do a flash mob and a campaign and this and that. And we forget that actually to have, especially to work in coalition, is a lot of investment in each other, in relationships, in checking in, one-on-one -on -one conversations, going out to coffee, seeing where people are at, seeing what people need to feel like this coalition represents them, and to slow down a bit. And again, this is something I'm struggling with, but it, it works wonders for coalition. So to not forget that, to, to, to let it be OK if a large part of the meeting is socializing. We have a lot of social events in our local group because it builds community. And once you've built community and relationships, and trust with each other, and you're not at each other's throats, and you're not arguing over this and that thing, but you actually have something solid that it's built on, that's where the direct action flows from. You have the trust, you have the community on which you can truly resist um, systems, whatever. <coughs> um, patience. So I kind of was talking about this. Did you want to ask something about that? Oh, some trigger questions at the end? Or this yeah, question except I apparently don't leave questions for the end. So to be fair, <laughs> let you ask first. <laughs> if it has to do with that. Well, yeah, the thing is that like, I, you hear a lot with like um, community organizing that there's, you know, there's also a lot of that sort of belief that it's more efficient and more effective, whatever, to divide that between, you know, some groups that do service, some groups that do community building, some groups that do direct action, and then all the you know, work together, mm -hmm. coalition build, but divide that out of the way. Do you, do you see that as being more effective, or like, or having one group do all of that? Which do you see as being more effective in the context of this? I would say that I don't know. I'd like to. I'd like to know more of those who are pushing that. I mean, my instinct is to think if the if the purpose is for us to trust each other and to be connected in ways more ways than just meetings every two weeks and planning actions, that you would want them integrated. But again, I'm I'm just learning this stuff, so I I, I I'd love to hear the other side. 
um, I also want to, you know, hear about the coalition building because there are two coalition buildings. I was working with a health organization who always wanted to do a uh, coalition building with other health. Mm. So they end up just ending up with the people who already knew about the subject. They never went anywhere else to build coalition that they didn't know. Mm -hmm. And I'm afraid, you know, we need to distinguish. If you need people to know about Palestine, you should not go to the events of these people in this room. Mm -hmm. You should go to Occupy. the... Occupy. You know, that's where the, the words get action. You go to another events, trying to talk to people and mingle people and educate them about the subject, not just the people who already know about these kind of things. Well, I'm all for, um, for, for building the movement and building participation and education. Um, so I, I didn't disagree with, with what you were saying in terms of what could be positive. I would say one plug to speaking to the choir is that I actually think that, we, uh, that we, we forget that we don't need consensus for change. We need a critical mass. And a lot of times we build that critical mass. And we go to these, I mean, I, I gave a talk, I don't know if I told this when I gave a workshop here on, on speaker training, but I went to, I, in Australia, I gave a talk and, I don't remember the city, and, the, and it was packed, it was a huge event, and the woman after came up to me and said, your, your event was great, but it was the same 200 people. I said, you have 200 people who are coming to your events, like have a campaign. I mean, that's, that's the point, is we move people. So if you have a lot of people who are coming to event after event after event, that's a sign. Maybe you don't need an event right now, maybe you need a campaign. And if you can harness all of that sympathy and try, instead of beating your head against the wall trying to get people all the way from the right, or even from you know natural allies, keep doing that. But um, I think speaking to choir is good if it's mobilizing. So that's just that. Um, okay, gotta get back to this. Um, so patience, I sort of touched on this, but you know, it's really challenging. As, you know, if you're somebody who's pouring your everything, all of your time and energy into something, and you're working with other people, I again, these are you know, kind of talking to myself here. To want everything to be equal and to want everybody to um, to pull you know pull their weight, everyone putting the same amount, and it's just not going to happen. People have different capacities. People are not able to contribute everyone in the exact same way. Oftentimes, people who can't contribute in one way that's visible are contributing in other ways. In St. Louis, at our local group, the same the one woman Fatima, she she does not she doesn't feel like she wants to speak publicly. She doesn't necessarily want to put together materials, but at every social event, she just feeds us and warms our hearts and she brings our community together and we realized at one point like what a service to our group so recognizing that people contribute in different ways and that they're valid and that you have to accept them even if you don't want to it's just the reality people people are not going to to all um, give the same amount and, and if you can go into that accepting it and realizing that things are going to be what they are um, the better I know this is easier said than done um, okay I have to skip through much of this um, but I will say, actually, um, on that, on that, I I was thinking about coalitions as a, sort of like a marriage, where sometimes you have to put the preservation of it before everyone being, you know, super happy. A, a lot of I think there are probably times when, um, when you um, when it, it'll be important to preserve your autonomy in your different groups, and you can do that separately. What you're going to do on the side, and that's good. And, and and the coalition should be in service of what you're trying to do a distraction from it but to recognize that in coalition certain sacrifices will need to be made and that you're, you want to nurture this and you want to preserve the coalition and sometimes that'll be impo more important the longevity of the coalition will be more important than whatever particular thing you're disagreeing about so I know these are vague I'm just trying to rush through here um, take them as you will <laughs> Um, okay, clarity on mission goals and core principles. Um, so I don't. I, I think you guys have a mission statement, and I actually think I was an email contact. I loved your mission statement. I can't remember it now. It was a while ago. I had encouraged you to actually um, add a line. Oh, wonderful! It's on the 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 yeah. thing. You don't have to read through it. It'll, it'll be a, uh, maybe a distraction. But what I want to say is, is having a mission statement is really, really important. Coming to it together, having that be a, a, a basis of reference. And one of the things that that I really encourage having as part of a mission statement. I'm not sure if it's in yet. Is, is stating very clearly the way that this work fits in with a larger commitment to um, anti-racism and to global justice. 
um, and that the coalition stands firmly against all forms of racism and bigotry, et cetera. And that's actually a nice reference point. It's a reference point for you internally to look back to. It's a reference point for externally for the media to see, um, for others to see that um, it can be, it, it seems obvious, but it actually isn't. And also in terms of coalition building with other communities, for, for them to see that you're not so singly only focused on this, but that you really do care um, about things beyond Palestine. Uh, okay, that was the highlight to that. Um, I'll talk about goals later. Um, talked about anti-racism, anti-oppression. Um, okay, there's there's more, but I'm going to um, I'm gonna well I'm gonna say two more things. Um, one was about internal communication. Um, and we found it really helpful in our in our coalition building a sort of regular representation consistency um, of people who come to meetings, representatives of the different organizations being there, um, and that can fluctuate, and that's okay, but it's natural. But generally speaking, to have a kind of continuity is it, it does help the sustainability of the of the coalition internal dynamics. Um, and by the way, there's a great resource. I might even send it to the group. I can't remember. Um, on coalition building that I found super helpful. Um, I can send it again to whoever signs up on the, um, on the list. Um, openness to self-evaluation, self-reflection, looking at the way the coalition is, is moving forward, um, and uh, dealing openly with conflict, okay, different cultures of the organization. There may be different, I mean, in our, I can say, for example, in, in our in the na nationwide coalition, there are groups who, you know, when I work with the Presbyterian Church of the United States, for divestment, there's a very different culture there from when I'm working with Occupy, um, or when I'm working with the, uh, you know, uh, uh, International Jewish Anti-Zionist Network. There are, you know, different cultures and, and being aware of them and respecting them. Um, anyway, some of this sounds obvious, I guess, as I say it out, um, out loud. Um, and then decision making. Um, do you have a clear model of decision making? Is it transparent to the outside world? Is it clear between you? Are you a consensus based decision making model? Are you a majority one? Are you a consensus based unless you really can't get to it, in which case you come to a vote? Um, is it about who's participating? Those who are actively working are the ones who get you know, who, who, who make these decisions? Do you have an executive committee to make rapid response things? These might be useful in, in your coalition building. Um, and general transparency. And after that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean up the rest of it because I wanna leave more time for discussion. Um, are there any questions just on this particular piece? I hope it wasn't too dry without the interest. <laughs> yeah. I guess I would feel the best sanctions um, campaign would be um, a more effective if there were debates like mm -hmm. between the disparate groups. I know I'm tired of the touchy feeling. I'm tired of all, you know, all of this. We need to actually discuss and dialogue the merits of the things. And I think that's a different approach to bringing it into the public eye. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, and reasonable, civilized debates between, for example, the Christian Zionists, fundamentalists, premillennial, dispensationalists, and the right-wing Jews and the Israelis. And like, what are your principles? What? How can this Bible be transformed into something that's, you know, self-convoluted and changed from what God intended to be in the first place? And there is such a, you know, like have just outright discussions and fundamentally change the way people might view things. So um, actually, I'm glad you brought up debates. Maybe uh, I didn't say it explicitly, but under cultural boycott, and I, I really appreciate Hamzi's um, words about sort of the limitations of some of the dialogue projects that, that he'd been involved in. That was oh, there you are. <laughs> that was really insightful. Um, but debates are encouraged. Actually, it's a public forum that shows that that where where these where the sides are being debated that are debating that's actually encouraged. It's only those that sort of mask things in terms of listening and, and um, dialogue. Um, so yeah, absolutely, the more debates better. I'm gonna Maybe see the floor. Go, we can just go right into the discussion. Sure. Right, right there. Sure. Um, I don't, I didn't know I was facilitating. Oh, no, not necessarily. Um, we were just up there. And but yeah, no, I don't want to be, I don't want to be so confident in the discussion. This is really your time. I'm happy to be a resource. But, um, well, I do want to make a comment on something you said, and it was about how when coalitions are first forming, that sometimes people try to divide up things evenly. And that's what I first tried to do. Like, we're gonna 
I'm going to do this amount and this amount and this amount, and it, it doesn't work that way, and I accept that. I mean, I, I may have more time than a lot of people. Some people have more time than I do, but every single person's little bit of time is important. Even if you all you do is, not all you do, but you collect an email and you send it to to have it subscribed. That's important. And who was it? I, I'm sorry, what is your name? Roya. Roya, you were telling me how busy you are, but you really contribute. You don't realize by sending me the information, you know, about well, Sending your information to others, yes. Yes, I'm, or just say, talking about the Colorado BDS campaign or, that is important, even if you take one minute. I mean, each little minute adds up and it is important and it isn't about an equal, I'm gonna spend this amount of time. And one more thing is, I remember our very first meeting, one of the people at the meeting said, well, I thought this was the way that it was supposed to be this and that. And I didn't know what to say at the time, but we're just building. We're, we're trying to figure things out. We're gonna fail at some things or we're gonna stumble at some things. We are all building it, you know? And we're trying to figure it out. How does it work for Colorado? And, and so now I know the answer. We, Sometimes we're going to fail, and sometimes we're going to succeed, but we're going to build it. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, planting seeds is important. That's and, right. Uh, I one thing that you brought up that, that I it struck me. So, um, so in St. Louis, we have a Veolia campaign going, and it's uh, against a, a, a Veolia contract for not direct privatization of, but we think eventual privatization of our water in St. Louis, Missouri. Um, and so we've been working in coalition with a lot of environmental groups as well as workers. Um, and uh, communities of color and everyone having their own different angle and one of the things there um, maybe is partially relevant to you is that you know we know that Palestine is kind of toxic to, to certain groups the environmental groups for example They're, they can't the Sierra Club can't go out and say we you know free Palestine free Palestine um, but we have an agreement that we will never undermine each other we will never get up and say, well, we don't believe in free Palestine, but we want this. We will stay on our message, and we accept that each other has limitations in their message, and we're stronger because of that. We're stronger that there are these different groups that come from their different angles. It's an asset. It makes us so hard. We're an amoeba. The opposition doesn't know what to do. We're all over the place. We have different messages. We're different people. So, so that's an asset and not something we need to insist on, and that includes within the community. If some people want to use certain messaging, as long as it's not undermining the rights of Palestinians, undermining the messaging of another. But if people, you know, if, if you and speaking to, you know, Christian Zionist audiences have different messaging than speaking to Occupy or whatever it might be, that's okay, as long as it's not, you know, undermining. That's the important except, but yeah. yes. Um, yeah, okay, I think um, I think I, I want to let us move on. Yeah. Um, so, so, so let me sit down. No, I'm not, I, we can just have open discussion for about 15 minutes and <clears throat> I would just like to encourage the email list to keep flowing. And yeah, where is it? It's, it's going. Up. It's going. Oh, oh, very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to I have a question. I have a question. How do you deal with, you have, I have this wonderful Jewish friends that they have been friends with years and years. And I don't know where they stand. We never talked about this issue before. I don't know where they stand as far as this issue. How do you... How do you present to them or why you're standing where you're standing? You know, I mean, I understand how you deal on a public with the different organization, but how do you deal with your friends, you know? Um, I know that I have lost few of my Jewish friends that I've been, you know, they just stop writing to me. So, but I do not know how to put this and deal with them at the same time stand my ground. So I have a lot of thoughts about that, but I want to be conscious that the time here for you guys to be talking to each other about where you want to go from here is precious, and that's sort of more maybe of a direct q and with me. So um, do you, uh, so, so I, I'm uh, respectfully not going to answer that okay. right now in the public forum. Um, do you have maybe like an opener question for the discussion? Like, I, I don't have one, so um, I, Here's Do you have one? That might help you. Um, so I have questions. So speak to them. Okay. Well, <laughs> but you might be able to answer that. And so a couple of years ago, um, Caterpillar had their stockholder meeting in Little Rock, Arkansas, mm -hmm. because they were scared, basically, to have it in Chicago. Huh. So um, because people knew to go there. So or Peoria, um, but they would go to Chicago. So Jewish Jewish Voice for Peace 
put a call out for people to speak, and they called me and asked me if I would go speak. They had stockholder certificates that I had in my name mm -hmm. to be able to go speak. So that would be part of So how do we do that? How do we communicate with each other? And like, I, I know that I'm part of Para because I'm a finished teacher. So if they, I mean, do you understand the question I'm asking? Uh, are you asking the specific logistics of uh, proxy shareholder. Well, I think that, that's where you mean group like that. needs to have that discussion. <coughs> that yeah, that where can we get those sorts of tools so that we can do those sorts of things? Yeah, and that would be a that would be a good topic of conversation. Hey Beth, this might be something you're central to, just in terms of how that communication could happen. She was bringing up how kind of maybe that kind of coordination could happen. Is that right? Um, because this. Is if we all go get rid of our stock, then we don't have a ticket. We don't have the insight. Right. Shareholder activism is a time-honored, wonderful <laughs> um, tactic for for targeting corporations, and it does require. I mean, there's national coordination. You know, I think JDP. Um, I can't remember now, but I think JDP has coordinated some of that. If you have caterpillar well, stock. Well, that's who had me. Yeah. Yeah. So JDP is doing for that. Is that something you feel like is something that? You want the coalition to discuss now, or I don't know. <laughs> let's let let's let the conversation go home. Um, does anyone else want to facilitate? By the way, because I'm not here enough already. Remember about about inclusivity over right. 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 Right.